right, here we go. And welcome to another episode of the Star Child Podcast. I am Star Child, your host. Um, I just got back from a month-long vacation, um, and I am going to start getting better at doing the weekly podcasts uh, in 2020. Um, but nevertheless, I did have a nice vacation um, visiting family and friends um, for the month that I did. Um, got to watch a bunch of movies, um, one of them uh, being the last Star Wars movie. Um, which was a difficult feat for, um, uh, J.J. Abrams to pull off, returning as, uh, the director, um, from, uh, Ryan Johnson's, uh, debacle, um, The Last Jedi, um, who managed to sneak in titties in a, uh, Disney-made Star Wars film, uh, Luke Skywalker milking that, uh, creature, (laughs) <laughs> on the island that he's on, um, drinking the green milk from not an udder, but an actual tit, an actual boob, um, which I was just uh, <laughs> blown away by and uh, made me laugh really hard. Um, so if, it's, if a movie is particularly bad, I, t- I, I tend to just uh, turn it into a comedy and laugh, laugh a whole lot. Um, but I, I actually enjoyed um, uh, The Rise of Skywalker. Um, I, I felt like it was a fun ride. Um, it was two hours, 40-some minutes long. Um, and like I was saying, it, it was a, a hard feat for J.J. Um, Abrams um, returning as director to conclude um, the Skywalker saga. Um, I'm interested to see where they take the series um the star wars franchise from here um i know i think i i saw like an article saying kathleen kennedy which is one of the producers of star wars Dis- a disney exec was saying that they were going to do just uh single uh single films from now on no more uh trilogies um but who knows uh where they go uh, with Star Wars. Um, other than uh, Vacation and Star Wars, I wanted to bring up um, the award season. It is award season, and I'm not watching any of them. <laughs> um, I stopped watching the award shows roughly six or seven years ago, I think it was. Um, and I think uh, the, the biggest reason uh, for it was um, just the the trend of so many great movies getting snubbed over and over again over the years um i just kind of got tired of seeing that um seeing really good movie making um being snubbed at the oscars um and some independent uh films and foreign films not even being nominated um because the oscars if you may or may not know as just primarily a American um, film uh, award show. Um, so it's not necessarily catering to an international audience, um, say like the Cannes Film Festival, uh, um, the, the Cannes Palme d'Or Awards uh, has um, an array of international films that are considered um so i just wanted to talk about um one of the main reasons uh why i stopped watching the oscars and the most notable uh snub that i can think of of recent memory happened in 2014 i think it was the 2014 oscars um scarlett johansson um starred in jonathan glazer's film under the skin um, where she plays an alien here on Earth that is here to, I don't want to give too much away, but is here to um, kind of learn and uh, um, adapt to human culture as well as um, seek out particular individuals uh, for some extraterrestrial testing of some sort she plays kind of like a almost like a spider-like um 
alien character where she um, seduces men in Scotland and then uh, take takes advantage of them and then um, they get kind of harvested um, for uh, nefarious reasons. Um, but that movie didn't even get considered, um, for the 2014 Oscars. Um, and I thought it was, uh, the best film of the year. Um, and I felt that Scarlett Johansson should have, um, won, um, best actress of the year, at least, uh, should have been nominated, which she wasn't. Um, so that was pretty shocking to me. Um, and since then I have, uh, boycotted the Oscars, um, and all other major award shows. Uh, the Golden Globes just happened, and I know Ricky Gervais um, absolutely, absolutely uh, demolished Hollywood um, in one night, which I absolutely loved. Uh, to their face, which is a, but which is nearly an impossible feat um, to do. Um, we all suffer from uh, stage fright. Um, even the best, uh, performers and, and comedians do, um, and to be in a room full of Hollywood execs and, uh, corporate CEOs, including Tim Cook, um, from Apple, uh, and him telling, um, them to the face that they own sweatshops in, uh, China and, uh, that their, uh, political opinions, um, are hypocritical because of a, a number of reasons, but I just thought that was uh, a very good mon monologue delivered by Ricky Gervais, which is uh, really hard to do. Um, my opinion, the Academy Awards uh, um, is just overly commercialized, just like Hollywood is. Uh, my previous uh, podcast, the commercialization of Hollywood, um, kind of touched on that, um, how the movies and the award shows have become more commercialized over the years as kind of the incentives have changed from movie making to um, just profit and uh, popularity, just what's popular, what's successful, um, not what's good and what's entertaining, um, which is a shame because I think audiences uh, deserve a lot better uh, movies. Um, especially if they're going to be paying um, uh, for streaming services as well as uh, um, high movie ticket prices. Um, another reason why I don't particularly care for the Oscars is they do shut out um, foreign films and they shut out independent films. Um, foreign foreign movies get reduced to, I believe, one one category um one award and independent films only really get represented in shorts the short categories um that i can think of um and so i would like if they're being truly progressive and truly inclusive they would include um foreign films and indie films independent films um uh to be nominated uh for new categories um, as well as, uh, having a stunt category. I, kn I know that there has been an argument there that, uh, the stunt men and women should have their own, um, cat category as well, which I am on board with that, that makes sense to me. Um, let's see. But as of as of the total pool of awards, I think uh, the Cannes Film Festival is probably the most reputable and uh, prestigious uh, out of all of them. Um, and that's why it's really the only one that I still watch um, and pay attention to um, because they um, actually come from a good place, I believe, uh, come from, at, at the core, they come from, you know, what is uh, good cinema, um, not how much money did the movie make. Um, which a lot of these awards are given to just um, which films and which artists make the most money. 
So that's kind of a shame. But if you if you don't know uh, the Con Film Festival, uh, C A N N E S is how it's spelled. Um, it takes place on the French Riviera um, every May um, for uh, ten days, I believe. Um, and it's just a celebration of international cinema. Um, and so if you've never heard of it or, uh, seen it, uh, I would recommend, uh, looking it up. It's, it's, uh, uh, pretty cool. Um, I think, uh, Parasite by the director Bong Joon-ho, um, won, uh, last year's Con Palme d'Or. Um, I've, I still have yet to see Parasite, that's on my list, um, but I've heard really, really good things about it, and I believe that they're going to even make a, um, a miniseries out of it, um, which I like. Um, I think miniseries are uh, the perfect uh, medium right now, um, kind of eight, eight episode chunks, um, hour long, uh, I think is perfect for storytelling right now. Um, you can, you can tell your whole story, I, I believe, um, in that amount of time, um, at least in, in one season, eight episodes, you know, eight, 10 episodes a season, um, you know, given, you know, a more epic story like Game of Thrones, you're definitely going to have more seasons, but, um, I don't think a lot of stories need a handful of seasons to, uh, tell the complete story. Um, a lot of shows peter out pretty quickly um, due to uh, just not having sufficient good writers uh, on board. Take, for example, Walking Dead started out extremely good um, and then fizzled out um, because they just they don't know how to end it, uh, in my opinion. Um, so if uh, a show should just be pre-written beginning to end... Um, uh, and miniseries seem to uh, fit uh, the mold quite well. And um, I think uh, people don't have the time to really sit down and watch a two-hour, two-plus-hour-long movie anymore. Um, so hour-long episodes are perfect for people's attention spans and schedules nowadays. Um so, other than my <laughs> gripe with uh, the award shows and the award season, um, and why I boycott the Oscars, uh, a life update is I am currently writing a script of my own. I'm writing a short film screenplay um, that I'm hoping to finish um, by the middle of this year, and then pre-production by the end of this year, and shooting, um, and then... Uh, eventually release in 2021 so I'm excited uh, to do that uh, project be working on that project this year um, I've been wanting to write my first script for a while now um, and I think I finally have uh, a good enough story uh, idea to um, put it on the screen so I hope uh, to have more updates for you on that later and on a side note, if you are interested in um, accessing a library of extremely well, well-made movies, um, I would recommend uh, the Criterion channel, um, which is a um, uh, movie streaming service that was um, just a, uh, a movie restoration company. Um, but now they have a uh, streaming service. So they uh, restore a lot of these old movies to 4K, uh, Blu-ray quality. Um, they look absolutely gorgeous. Um, they look like they were shot yesterday on the best uh, uh, movie cameras you could find. Um, and so this is just kind of a, a clip of um, uh, their streaming service. So here's the Criterion channel. Uh, I own, I personally own a bunch of their movies, but now that they have a streaming service, you could just access all the movies that they have restored, which is beautiful. You don't, because individually their movies are kind of expensive. Um, so I would always just wait for their 50% off Barnes and Noble sale, uh, to go on to buy a bunch of them. Uh, but now that they have a streaming service, I am more than willing to just pay them the monthly fee to access their entire library. 
Um, so here's just a quick clip. Okay, and another streaming service, uh, Mubi, M-U-B-I, is also uh, a good alternative. Um, and I will end with, uh, this is me and my dog, uh, who I love dearly. Uh, his name is Jack. Uh, he, he's a, a Morky breed, uh, Maltese mixed with a Yorkie, uh, super adorable and fluffy. Um, everyone loves dogs. Who doesn't love dogs? Um, Thank you so much for watching. I am Star Child, your host. Um, tune in for weekly podcasts um, all this year. Um, uh, all of my information will be in the description below. Um, check out my website, starchildgallery.com. Um, my uh, shop, which has personally custom-made designs, uh, are on there, which are really cool. If you check out, that really helps uh, support this channel and this podcast. Um Let's see, uh, links to social media, follow me there where I post a bunch of fun photographs. Um, and you can reach out to me personally at um, starchild.seattle at gmail.com. Uh, that's starchild.seattle at gmail.com. I'll post that in the description as well now that I'm thinking about it. Um, so if you have any suggestions or comments, you can leave them below or feel free to email me as well. Um, so again, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you next week.